Hi friends, I want to give you an introduction to the improvement kata and it's really a very simple idea. Um, the next several sections are all about the improvement kata in great detail. Um, but the basic idea is very simple and it's most important that you get the basic idea. And the basic idea begins with the fact that culture is habit patterns. In other words, there are overt behavior habits, the way we speak, time we come to work, how we dress, how we eat. Those are all sort of visible, overt behavior. But there are also emotional habits, the way we feel about things. We don't decide to feel each day about certain things. We have sort of an automatic, habitual response that's an emotional response. And we also have habitual ways of thinking about things. And much of the improvement kata is about altering those habits, particularly how we think about things, and how we think about improvement, and how we think about um, problems in the organization, and, and how, we, how we solve problems. So there, there are a couple sort of fundamental ideas, and, and Mike Rother, who wrote the book Toyota Kata, deserves credit for sort of bringing this idea of katas to the fore. Um, I've taken that idea and applied it to teams and I, I think been a little bit more comprehensive about the meaning of it. But nevertheless, the, the basic idea is simple and, and the first idea is having an attitude of science. In other words, how we think about problems and how we think about improving performance needs to be fact-based. And it is not necessarily our habit to look at the facts, to look at the data. So asking where's the data, <laughs> asking what does the data look like, what is the data doing, is uh, the first set of habits that, that we, we need to develop. And that's, that's not hard, it's just, it's just a habit or a discipline that we need to develop. Another mental habit is the idea of continuous improvement. And, and the idea is very simple. There is no one definitive level of performance or right way to do things. What's smart? What's intellectual? What's strong? You know, all those words describe something that's relative, right? What's great performance? I don't know. It, it's a relative concept. So we, we always, in our personal life, we want to become smarter. We may want to become stronger. We want to become healthier. We want to become better people. And that process is never ending. As human beings, we are engaged or ought to be, in my opinion, um, engaged in the process of continuously improving ourselves. But in an organization, there is performance. And on teams, teams own performance. They own the performance of some process. And it is their job to engage in continuous improvement. So we know the facts. Then we're going to seek challenge to move the bar up, what I like, like to call creative dissatisfaction, being dissatisfied with the gap from where we are to wh where we could be, and working on improving that. Now, thir third concept, and it's again, it's at the core of Toyota production system or lean management, is respect for people. And it's the assumption that 99% of people, when given the opportunity, in the absence of fear, Given knowledge, they will seek to improve. If you believe that, you have respect for people, and you treat people honorably or respectfully in helping them to improve, encouraging them to improve. You don't have to frighten them into improving. You don't have to threaten them into improving. You have to give them the challenge, give them the data, and they will very naturally seek improvement. That is a habit that most people have in the absence of fear or in the absence of being taught otherwise. It is the role of the leader to challenge people. It's the role of the leader to give people facts, present them with the challenge, and then reinforce improvement. Praise, clap their hands, you know, sing a song, whatever works, to make people feel good about the fact that they have improved. Every sport, every team includes the process of celebration. Every time a wide receiver catches the ball in the end zone, they do a little dance, <laughs> they celebrate, and they get hugged and they get patted on the back by their, their colleagues. 
Well, we need to incorporate that habit of celebrating improvement because it encourages and we're more likely to do more of it in the future. Now, those are the very simple ideas behind developing good habits, uh, habits of improvement. Now, when you look at the, the map that I gave you, the coaching map and the activity map, all the sections of the course in blue in the middle here um, involve the improvement kata, and they, they go into depth. Um, everything from knowing what your customer requirements are to setting targets, et cetera, et cetera. So consider all that part of the improvement kata. Another way of illustrating it, you'll remember my, my performance cycle here, and I said there are three major sections, planning and organizing the improvement kata, and then developing supplementary or additional helpful uh, skills for, to be effective. Well, when we, when we looked at that, we, you know, we said the, the first three circles there of identifying your charter and your purpose, your roles and responsibilities, and a scorecard were part of getting organized. Now, the scorecard or scorekeeping can be either part of the improvement kata or be part of getting organized. Initially, you want to say, well, wh what are we accountable for? How do we keep score on our, our team, the performance of our team? So that's part of getting organized. But the fact is you're, you then continue to look at your scorecard, keep your scorecard up to date, keep it on the wall. So these four in, in dark red um, circles are all part of the improvement kata, keeping score, setting targets for improvement, analyzing problems, seeking ways to improve performance, and we'll go into a lot of detail on that, and then recognizing improvement and standardizing uh, improvement. So you can, you can look at them all this way, a sort of one circle. And, and, I, and I like to think of this as part of what you might call leading with respect. One of my clients asked me, she said, you know, Larry, I, I'm concerned that we're not doing enough to get at the daily interaction between managers and their employees. And I'm not sure we're doing enough to guide them to treat their people respectfully as they seek to improve. And I, I thought about that, and I thought that was, that was an important customer requirement, an important request from a customer. And so I, I took these four elements of the improvement kata, and I identified questions that if, if I were your manager, let's say, or anybody's manager, regarding the scorecard, what, what would I do? As I walk around, do my gimba walk, you know, get on the spot where, where people are doing their work, and there's a team, what, what, would I, what would I ask them about their scorecard? Um, and if you respect them, you don't, you don't order them, you don't dictate to them, you ask questions. Questions are respectful, right? So I, I might ask, what is the measure that you're working on improving? Um, what is the current state of it? Now, the current state of it may be visible on the graph, but I might ask the team what they think about that. I mean, do they think that's okay? Do they think it's terrible, good? And why do they think it is what, what it is? I, I, if there's a trend going up or going down, I would ask them what they think about that. Um, and, and why do they think it's going up or going down? Are they learning something from that, from that trend? And who knows about this? I mean, do, do all the team members know about this? Do, do they all care about it? If they don't care about it and they don't know about it, nothing's going to happen, right? So people need to know and they need to care. So I would ask them questions about that. And then, the target condition, right? What is the challenge? What, what are we trying to improve? And anytime you have a graph with a stable baseline of performance, there's some amount that you can Im improve that performance. And it may be a 5% or it may be 50% or whatever. But I would ask the team, and, and it's always best when a team sets their own objectives. So I would ask them what their objective is. What, where are they trying to get to? And I'm not asking them where the ultimate point is that they'd like to get to, I'm asking them, what are they working on in the short term? What are they working, where, where are they trying to get to in the next few weeks, let's say? Um, and the team should have an idea about that. They, sh they should think about that. So that's the challenge, is to get from where you are to, to where you think you could be. And I would ask myself, as I was listening to the team, is, it, is that challenging? Uh, is that a, a challenging objective? Yet, is it an achievable? I mean, good objectives are both challenging, they're stretching, right? But on the other hand, they're not impossible to achieve, they're achievable. 
then a, a lot of this course is about analyzing and improving, analyzing problems and, and solving problems and improving performance. Um, so there are n numerous sections on that, but particularly the PDCA or PDSA and the A3 root cause analysis, um, variance analysis, mapping your process, all of that falls into this circle uh, of analyzing and, and improving performance. And if I were talking to the team, I'd ask them what their plan is. You know, have they, what, what, what's their analysis? Have they, looking at where the data is, um, what are they going to do differently to move up the bar to, to Im improve performance? And um, that's, that's their plan, right? That's their experiment. And, and I, I would, in talking to them, I would always, you know, I, I, I love the word experiment, right? Because it sort of gives you the freedom uh, to try things. And it doesn't assume you ought to know. Why should you ought to know, right? I mean, you, you only ought to know if you've tried something and it's worked. Then you ought to know, right? But you don't ought to know out of blue sky. You, you ought to know out of, out of experimenting. So I, I would ask the team, you know, what, what is their experiment? And or what has been done and what has worked and what hasn't worked and what have you learned? You experiment and you learn, right? You experiment and you learn. You experiment and you learn. And, and, and then you say, well, what's the next thing we could try? Because we're always trying to improve, right? Always, forever, the rest of our life, till you die. <laughs> you should be trying to improve. So what are the experiments that you're conducting uh, at, as a team? And then finally, you know, when you say, well, what have we learned? What, what's worked? Um, what, what about that can we standardize? Because if we find things that worked, you know, don't forget about it and go back to the way you're doing things before. Make that standard work. Make that a normal part of your daily activity or weekly activity or whatever is required. So standardize it and then, then celebrate your success. Doesn't have to be a big deal, but, but, but are, is somebody celebrating success? Is somebody recognizing the good things this team is doing and, and uh, helping them appreciate their own, their own efforts? Now, if I were you and I'm attaching as a PDF file this one page sheet, that you can print out and put on your office wall or your or wherever it works for you, um, that basically goes through these four steps of the improvement kata and questions that you might ask a team as they're, as they're going through it. Does that make sense? I, I hope that makes sense for you. Now, th these sections of the course, really 8 through 14, um, all of these sections are skills, methodologies, processes for seeking improvement. And I won't go into each of these now because you're going to go, go through them in depth as you go through the rest of the, rest of the course. I hope that makes sense. I, that's the improvement card. And, and be sure you think about those basic ideas of the attitudes of science and respect for people and so forth. Because that's, that's really what changes habits. That's what it's about. Thanks. <laughs>